Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, I just wanted to know some, give me a brief uh, uh, input about your products and services offered by your company in banking and BFSI domain. So, what we do in terms of the BFSI, we have our third party vendors, we have our clients, we have also partners who are into banking industry as such. Mm -hmm. Now, what we have mandated them, I myself, we are the beneficiaries of the banking and the insurance in the, uh, products as such. So, we couple it out with our own products and our services. Like for example, we are into telco business. Mm -hmm. Now, having said the telco business, I have to constantly work with banks to make sure the payment services, what they bring in, are A, seamless, be secured so that I get the money what the customer is paying for mm. customer is not paying me directly he's paying through a bank mm. now that is what we are talking about and this is where more of the influence from the business towards the bank comes into the picture so the other thing what we are looking about a reinsurance factor we're not talking about the insurance we're talking about the reinsurance insurance for the insurance yeah. so now what happens is there are few areas, for example, a data center insurance, what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, I've taken a data center insurance for unknown threats. Mm -hmm. What about unknown threats? Right. How do you insure me for an unknown threat? Mm -hmm. So that is where the reinsurance comes into the picture. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a very small industry, which I think most of the insurance guys needs to take call for. They have to go grow into it. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is what my question, corresponding question for that. Uh, usually, uh, like you said that you have offices in Malaysia and Singapore. I have got some kind of contact when we've seen that some of the insurance companies are there. Uh, like uh, when you talk about payments, banking would be there, but there's a huge volumes of payments in terms of insurance company where the customer pays the premium. There's a claim in between. There's a commission payment for the agents and in between some kind of withdrawals death claims in death claims that I have to give it to the nominee or a beneficiary so how uh, like uh, you how do you feel that your company will uh, will fit into the and gauge yourself okay. so, so let's, let's understand it very simply put in a context of a company which hosts around like 5,000 employees mm -hmm. now in an event until unfortunate event where I have around like three or four employee of my employees mm -hmm. succumb to an e unfortunate event and they're dead so how best I can work with an insurance company in terms of a seamless way of processing the money for which a, probably a person who the family of the kin of the family who is dead right. is in desperate need of it mm -hmm. or somebody who is admitted to the hospital mm -hmm. the insurance needs to go through a very simple example I would give it is um, I had my back spasm I got admitted in the hospital the insurance took almost six hours to get it approved though we are a corporate we are the biggest one now I was like why on this earth would you take six hours mm. that are you challenging the doctor's capability I'm talking about it, I'm talking about a, from a very layman's language mm. I'm not, I don't want to talk about business language. Mm. why on this earth would you take six hours to approve an insurance you know a pre-insurance saying that hey this person is okay to get admitted mm. otherwise I have to pay a hefty money as an advance for the hospitals mm. to take care of me now what if I'm ill that I can't even access my credit cards mm -hmm. so these are the things what an insurance company needs to work towards mm -hmm. number one number two is that how secure is my information mm -hmm. because we are sitting in an information security conclave right. so I always want to bring back that thread of security of the information mm -hmm. mr. insurer you have all my information with you right. you have my blood test reports right. you have my absolute images of my entire body mm -hmm. you have my cell phone numbers you have I would say almost 90% of my identity as person, you have it, yes. right? Mm -hmm. You know all, all diseases I am living with. Mm -hmm. What and how can you guarantee that your, the information is secured with you? Practically, you can clone me. Mm. Possible. Possible. Yeah. Right. If you sell my entire information, what yeah. you have, you can clone me, mm. right? Because there is nothing what you don't have about me. Apart from knowing that where, when and where I wake up, in fact, most of the people even capture that. Well, how much time do you sleep? How much do that? So, where do you? How do you ensure the public that the information is secured? Mm -hmm. Now, have you heard any company or any entity putting a penalty on an insurer for a compromise of a company? Any entity? Any entity? In terms of, uh, I am a beneficiary of an insurance product. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, have you heard? Any person who is the beneficiary of the insurance company mm. putting a claim or the penalty on the insurance company itself? Practically no. The reason being is that we have taken insurance companies for granted. Correct. We are under the assumption that 
my information with insurance companies safe and secure mm. but let me tell you my friend nobody mm. nobody's information today is secure mm. so rather than thinking about the security we should think about the anti security mm. that is when you will start thinking about security mm. you have to move your thought process from the complacency to paranoid mm. right if i'm talking to you right now i can't assure that all my the, all the information what is spoken to you is safe Uh, sir uh, yeah uh, with the insurance company we have a very basic principle it's like utmost good faith like based on your information you provide me we ha- i have an utmost good faith that i will comply with whatever the information you have been given so basically it's an from the policy uh, p- the person who is about to take an insurance even he also ensure that the correct information is given because insurance most is based on info based what based on information you provide your premium will be decided so the challenges what we face here is uh, because uh, when you see general insurance it's basically one year uh, health insurance is something between 3 years even like talking in terms of life insurance where the policy ranges for 5 years 10 years and 15 years so there's a human tendency that they try to forget that what is my premium paid we see that lot of unclaimed money lying with the insurance company so there might be a tendency thinking that is how to wheedle out that money yeah like it possibility in banking happen that we i get a call from a sbi i think that i'm from sbi give me your card details yeah. so we used to get that possibilities is there some kind of employees would have been given that information yes. so how, like do you have you have any kind of solutions for insurance companies or banking for such kind of things uh, technologically i cannot comment on the solutions per se but from the awareness factor from the policy formation factors it is very important for an insurance company to know where and how i will detect the malicious information right so how do you know the genuinity of the source of the information mm. that is the biggest challenge today an insurance company is facing mm. it is very easy for someone to to do an identity theft right now it is very easy for you to make yourself as shrinivas kulkarni it takes hardly any time to get a pan card in india do you know that that's easy yeah? right because we are from insurance we we get to know that uh, most of the insurance companies have outsourced their activities of policy servicing claims and all those things so we share with the third party details so again the information is still not safe exactly so uh, the, that we feel that there's no enough technology available in india as of yeah, now for example get out of his hotel walk on the main road mm. today morning when i was walking on this road mm. i saw a board saying that pan card available for 149 rupees <laughs> that's what it said that's the level of advertisement what people have come up to that's the mm. level of ease of process but yes it is good to have a seamless process what about the security yes. that's what my concern coming from the second concern which is coming from is that how do you ensure that the money and the claims and the the genuinity of a person who is claiming to be who he is mm. or the disease is what he come from mm. is actually genuine if you ask me do you have any previous illness before giving you the premium i would definitely say no because the moment i say i have some kind of an illness your premium shoots up correct right now i want to ask you a question mm. if i have a back pain right i am claiming i'm buying an insurance for my life why would your insurance could so good go up can you give me one person who is 100% fit in this world sir uh, basically this this depends upon the morbidity rates usually what happens is uh, based on the life uh, expectancy also is it's also taken into consideration just to see that the normal person like it's usually for the normal kind of thing we don't charge extra premium only where the medical risk is there we try to make it an extra premium based on the mortality tables but uh, but the concern is customer is not aware they know only in terms of financial premium kind of thing but if you are a financially aware customer like the moment the questions you are posing so if it feels that you are financially aware you are more in terms of costing and all those things so that is where uh, the actuaries design the product in such a way that uh, it is according to the uh, suitable needs of the customers i i completely agree with you on that front but what i am trying to convey is that you are allowing a public or a person to lie about his own health mm. in a way saying that the moment you put a hefty premium to make sure you are secured you are opening up a vector where he is already compromising on the information mm. now eventually you will get into know that oh he lied about it and all the insurance claims are cancelled through mm. which is something absolutely it's a question of integrity mm. it's a question of something like you know genuinity and honesty and integrity needs to The other thing which I want to say is that you mentioned a word. It's a, it's a good faith. I said that's 
sorry to say that but that's a very and highly abused word in the industry today but that's one of the main principle of insurance and um, 90% of uh, cases we said based on what information you provide thinking that it's correct because i as an underwriter haven't met the customer so based on what information it's, it's like meeting something like uh, like a matrimonial website they said i know how to how to make a cooking the moment get married they said like, i know how to prepare only maggi because i didn't said cooking about the different varieties of cooking this is what i told you is highly abused word <laughs> so when i say highly abused word what i'm talking about people have used good faith for every possible reason other than the actual principle what it stands for Correct. that is what i'm trying to say when i say highly abused words i'm not talking about negative word i'm talking about positive negative word mm. people have chosen to use good faith into almost every any can kind of everything mm. said it hey you know what i've got a new license to drive right now you should have good faith in me let's take a lamborghini and drive that's an abuse of that word that's what i'm saying so what you companies should also do or should also put a pressure on the industry and say that before we come in with our products and services you should be equipped enough with framework where a the information you are capturing about your end users in terms of storage mm. in terms of transit mm. in terms of process all mm. the three mm. the, the information can only be in three ways Correct. right your name your id your address Other your date of birth either mm. it's stored somewhere mm. or it's moving from one place to another mm. or you as an insurer you are processing something like as an underwriter i'm processing some information of yours mm. yeah. so without you as a company having enough strong framework i would say that don't come to us to buy the insurance products because we are putting our credibility at risk mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that is where insurance companies are more inclined towards the it support system yeah. and uh, i am also like, i see that when we go with a the consulting there's a gap between that the con- domain consulting and the it that that understanding awareness is somewhere falling short so that has to be bridged up with a regu- with a because it has a different regulatory body insurance has a different re- how the inter regulatory body works in this specific domain because one approval from here one approval from it will take time so how do we can just like uh, how do you feel that these two regulatory body where like two different regulatory bodies are there how the this bridge this gap can be bridged machine learning is one of the best things to look out for now what machine learning does is that if you look about it let's let's talk about the insurer uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence about it right a doctor a seasoned doctor experienced doctor can only process 10000 images at one time mm-hmm. right so and that is the source of any prediction what he will do for you for your treatment mm-hmm. right right so that your insurance can get approved and all that mm-hmm. but when you talk about machine learning it can process more than a million images at a time mm-hmm. so that the correlation factor is much more higher in terms of machine learning versus a human doc having said that i'm not negating the fact of importance and uh, utmost respect to the doctors who we have mm-hmm. i come from the family of doctors mm-hmm. so i can definitely value their contribution towards mm-hmm. it but yes machine learning is in a way taking over so that's that is something which you as an insurance company should think about investing in mm-hmm. so what the processing the see we are talking about two things the accuracy of the processing of the claims mm-hmm. that is something which you guys have to look at mm-hmm. how accurate is your claim mm-hmm. right how accurate is your approval or how accurate is your redress or 90% of grievances are on claims only claims yeah, that's what mo- see when i talk about insurance it's all about claims mm-hmm. right the other thing is turn around time how fast you can do it that is where we require support of it systems we because when we uh, like uh, as a very basic level to work we used to blame even it systems systems are not working down you come later because your premium is supposed to pay now tomorrow your policy will get lapsed such kind of instances we have seen practically yes. issuing a manual receipt and afterwards tomorrow when i enter there is no there is no provision actually artificial intelligence and machine learning is something which will definitely help any mm. kind of an insurance mm. company to do it mm. talking about uh, the machine learning today bankings are investing heavily when i walked to chase bank in us i walked in all i did was i gave my passport number mm. they had every information about me ready in place before i could even sit on the table and talk to the banker i don't even have to tell them that hi my name is shrinivas kulkarni they have everything about me available they have they have made sure that the information what and why i'm coming to capture onto re- Uh, you know address is absolutely in there they have not left any corner untouched it's, and they knew that i was tra- traveling to us they knew that i was spending over here they knew all the information mm. 
about it because I was using Chase card, Chase American Express card. Okay. So they knew where I had spent money. They knew what happened because I went to the clinic, mm -hmm. saying that my stomach was upset. They, the first question the banker asked me, "How is your stomach, Mr. Kulkarni, today?" I was I was touched. I was touched. That is what the health insurance companies will require such kind of information. I was, touched. I was like, "Wow, you're really concerned about me. I would definitely be your customer for life." Because you are not thinking about making commission out of my transaction. You are really concerned about me. Mm -hmm. He asked me, do you want to have something hot to drink? Mm -hmm. Because he knew I went to the cleaning for my sore throat. Okay. So that is something which a human intervention cannot do. You need to adopt and move towards machine learning. Correct. So one last question. How is how was your experience with this infosec intelligence come up? It's it's excellent. I was here only for a half a day, and the amount of uh, the 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 expertise which was brought to the discussion when I was listening to a few of the guys over here, it's excellent. Number one. Number two is that the way people have hosted me is exceptionally very well. The kind of respect, the kind of comfort level what these guys gave to me was really good. Thank you very much. Very good insight, one information. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.